KFWB News Talk 980. My name is Les Brown, and we welcome you and thank you so much for joining us. As you listen to this program, one of the things you find, you have not only the opportunity to listen to some interesting and, and stimulating stories and conversations, but also to participate as, as well and reflect on life and on your own stuff. But the other thing is that it's, it's designed deliberately to have a different kind of feel and a different kind of energy as we talk about human interest stories and things that people deal with, every everyday things. I, I was just thinking about coping with loss or coping with disappointment or coping with negativity that is a skill and there's some people who can handle stuff that that no matter how you throw them psychologists they they call them skaters they're going to land on their feet but there's some people most of us just have not been taught the coping skills on how to handle various types of situations how do you handle being involved with a person that's argumentative you love them they love you but that's that's something that that's just a part of their personality that's who they are and you've decided you know what i'm going to handle this i'm going to deal with this how do you do that i've always been fascinated with people who have the ability to deal with negative toxic energy and toxic people argumentative people because I don't have the level of patience. Maybe I do have it, but I have not been I have not been taught how to tap into that dimension of myself. And so that's what we're talking about. And I'd like to hear your coping skills. When you've been in an uncomfortable situation, a toxic environment, or you had a loss or a disappointment and something that was major to you, might have been small to other people, but this was a biggie to you. I want to know how you handled that. What did you do with that? And how did you learn how to deal with that? The number to call is 888-539-2980. That's 888-539-2980. And this time right now, I, I, I want to talk to Connie. Connie, hello, how are you, Connie? I want, I want to know your story. You were recently laid off, and, and you're starting over again. Tell us about that. Well... You know, I started working really young. I think my parents gave us a really good foundation for the work ethic and, you know, not uh, being uh, waiting for something to be given to you. So I've been working since I was a kid, and I got this great job, and I thought my life was set. 21 years later, you know, I find out that um, my services were no longer needed, and uh, it was a really tough realization to have to start over again. And in the meantime... You know, I was battling an illness and uh, having bouts with the depression and anxiety. And it's nothing new, and everybody goes through it at one point or another. And something about the coping skills that you were mentioning earlier really hit home because nobody wants to talk about it. People kind of just put this in the back burner and let's not open this in conversation. But you've got to do that one thing that makes you happy every day. And for me, a lot of it is music. A lot of it is singing. I do some karaoke. But... It doesn't sweep the problems under the rug, and I think any day above ground is a good day. You've got to stay away from those Debbie Downers because it, it only brings you down. You know, misery loves company. You know, something you said that's key. You said you've got to find ways to make yourself happy every day. Yeah, I attribute that to therapy. I'm a big believer in that, and I like the therapist that doesn't issue pills and says, here, take this, take this. I like the ones that give you the homework, the ones that say, find the one thing that makes you happy and do that every day. Give yourself that time because you get buried in the job the way I did. I'm so busy trying to make a living to raise my children, and that's important, but you also have to remember, your kids are going to grow up someday. you got to make that time for you. Don't forget who you are because those we are losing people. We do get older, and these things are just a natural progression of life, and unfortunately, you know, I suffered a little illness in my that is carried on now in, in my early 40s. And, you know, it's, it's not fun, you know, try to make yourself feel better when you're in pain. But you got to try because I always yes. think things can be worse. Absolutely. Well, listen, I, I really appreciate your openness and your calling in to to share that. And, and Connie, I, I just want you to know that given who you are and how you've decided to stand and to cope with the challenges in your life, your life is, is bright, your future is bright, and you're going to have untold happiness and joy. I see that for you. Thank you so much for calling in. 
Right now, I, I want to talk to Ann. The number to call, we're, we're talking about coping with, with, with negative things, loss, disappointment, negative people, sometimes an illness. How do you deal with this? I mean, listen to Connie. She lost her job. She had to start all over again, and she also had an illness at the time. She was battling illness, but she said something that was key. She said, hey, I had to find ways to make myself happy every day, and I got some therapy. I believe in, in asking for help, not because you're weak, but because you want to remain strong and ask for help and don't stop until you get it and so Ann, uh, you you have a negative husband and you've been seeing a therapist in order to deal with it talk to us about that and thank you very much for calling in i've been married 26 years and fairly unhappy for most of it but it's very hard to break away from a marriage when you vote you when you did go up with a father um figure and uh -huh. that was one of my main concerns to make sure my children always had a mother and a father at home but I am very outgoing. I love to do things. I love to mingle with people and things like that. And he just doesn't like to do anything but just stay home, not talk to anybody, doesn't like to be beyond the phone. I can't text anybody because he's, why are you texting? What's so interested about that? He's just so down on everything. It just brings me down and makes me feel lower. And how do, so how, how have you been dealing with that, Ann? I want to know, how. what are the things you've been doing other than going to a therapist to deal with that? You know what, Just some, I just have a lot of patience. I just have a lot of patience. I pray a lot, and I ask, you know, to change him or to change me or give me the right direction, open the door to let me know if I walk out. You know, should I stick in it? I mean, I just feel... How, how old are your kids? Uh, my Well, my oldest son has already moved out. My youngest is 16. Mm, okay, and so when you look at yourself now, when that 16-year-old reaches 18 and, and goes, do you think that you'll have the capacity and the coping skills to stay in that environment? Uh, probably so, yes. I probably would not, uh, probably would find a resource one way or another. And so, and, and what is it that, and what is it that keeps you there? I want to know what is it that you're getting out of it that keeps you there, that gives you the strength to stay in that kind of environment? What gives me the strength, like, probably because of my son, because of my child. He has No, I'm saying, but he's going to go. Pretty soon, he's going to leave. Oh, oh, your son has a disability. Right. Okay, right. so therefore, you're staying there for your son because your son needs the two of you in order for you to be able to provide for him. Pretty much, yes. I think he'll need either one of us for the rest of his life, I'm pretty sure. Got it. Okay. Yeah, and that and that's an understandable reason and the, and a compelling reason to stay there. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Yes. And and so, what hey, would you say to people with... that are in your similar situation? What coping skills would you share with them? Something that's been important, like one of the things that Connie talked about, finding something to do to make herself happy. Have you found something like that for yourself? Yeah, Some I hobby that's or something. That's why I go to therapy, and that's why I talk to a therapist. So I talk to one of my very good friends. And, you know, she's always, she's always so positive about why do you stay there? What makes you happy? You, it doesn't matter if you live in your car and you live in a box. You need to be happy. And Absolutely. you're not showing your children how to be happy. You're teaching them negativity. You're teaching them it's okay to be mistreated. It's okay to have a controlling person that runs your life. And that's yes. not a good thing. And I think that's what builds up in me. And mm -hmm. so such a negative person, you know, I guess well, I am and, and around others. You deserve to be happy, and I'm sure you're going to figure out a way in which you can maximize your level of happiness in life. Thank you so much for calling in and, and just sharing what you've been sharing with us right now. Thank you so much. We're talking about coping with loss, disappointment, negative people, and negative situations. The number to call is 888-539-2980. That's 888-539-2980. I want to hear from you. My name is Les Brown. You're listening to KFWB News Talk 980.